Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Dr. Pluring's. Um, don't quite know what this is. Uh, this is a bit of a brainstorming session. I have brought myself a, bought myself a caravan uh, in 1997 with all the uh, amenities and luxuries that you would expect from a 1997 caravan, uh, meaning that it has. Um, it has uh, it, it works like this currently this is the, how, how it is it's pretty much stock uh, as it is it's a bit has a bit of wear and tear on it obviously but you know, it's uh, 90, 1997 so it has a few years on it but I got it I got it really really for a really good price um, very good price in fact uh, and I, from a relative my uncle uh, an uncle of mine uh, so this is it. The, this is more or less the model. Uh, it looks basically like this. Yeah, and uh, so so how it works is uh, it has the following. It has a refrigerator, of course. It has a heater, and it has a water. Uh, uh, the heating, the heat is provided to the caravan via carried through the caravan via water. It also has water in, in the floor, uh, heating in the floor, so that's pretty nice, and it has convectors all around. The heating system is excellent, obviously. Uh, and uh, what else does it have? It has a... You can cook two, two uh, burners, yes. And it all, all runs on, uh, on propane or butane, obviously, which is here. So you have two... I can have two uh, 11 kilogram uh, flasks, or what you call them, but the the, the the eleven kilograms. That's the the actual gas. That is eleven kilograms, and then the the flask weighs about the same. So that's that's forty kilograms there, uh, just just for that. And what I there there are a few things. Uh, yeah, the electrical system uh, is uh, about here. There is a small seventy five amp hour twelve volt LED acid better battery i.e. regular car battery uh, which isn't all that great really and uh, the the primary thing that i really don't like about this is the refrigerator because that's just awful it's just one of, it's one of these absorption uh, ref refrigerators that can well it has the convenience and the uh, something that you can run it on 230 volts you can run it on on gas and uh, in theory you could also run it off the of 12 volt from your towing vehicle whilst you're towing however in practice that's uh, not really you have to wire your, your thing up and you have to modify your, your towing vehicle to provide enough power here to actually get that working uh, so that's more or less forget about it but this this refrigerator refrigerators are so horribly inefficient. It's just a just a joke, really. I mean, they work. They work just fine for keeping things cold. You can't really get things very cold with these types of refrigerators. And they use uh, if you run it. I, I I don't. I'm not the kind of person to to check into a campsite that often. Every now and then, maybe I might. But uh, most of the time, I like to. To uh, to free camp as we call it, I think it's called uh, people around might call it wild camping or something, or the Americans call it boondocking maybe. But uh, here we call it free camping, i.e. finding a nice spot somewhere and and uh, putting down the the stud bin, the the support legs, and, and you're done. Uh, or yeah, yeah, wherever. Basically, so that's how I like to roll with it, and uh, and then you you sort of uh, you have to run it on, on gas, all of it. You have to run the refrigerator on gas. You have to run the the heater on gas. You have to run the uh, yeah. You obviously have to cook with the gas. That's all right though. We can cook with the gas, and the heater is also sort of fine to run with the gas because that's pretty damn efficient. I mean, it burns gas and and it heats water with it and circulates the water around the thing. Uh, so that this uses extremely little electric power in terms of electricity. Uh, you could probably run it off this 12 volt battery. Uh, the only thing that that go, runs off the 12 volt battery is the lights inside. 
uh, and uh, the heating system, the, the fuse for the heating system is one amp. So the, the, all of the heating system can at maximum draw one amp at 12 volts. And um, I don't even think it does that very often. It needs a little uh, ignition spark. Uh, and when, once it has that, it needs the circulation pump, which is just a little thing si sitting in the expansion tank with a little uh, propeller on it. Uh, that's enough apparently to circulate the, the, the warm water around. And of course it also has hot water. This is, that is extremely luxurious. This is hot water. Yes, obviously it has hot water. And you can run the heater of, uh, of the gas or you can run it on if you have um, if you have mains uh, hook up, you can run it on uh, electricity to 30 volts. And then it has uh, two settings, one kilowatt or two kilowatts for winter use. Uh, but I don't have any winter tires for it and I don't think I'm going to, but that's, that's for later. Never mind. So that, that's how, how it's working currently. Um, and also, yeah, of course, the, the water pump, obviously, also draws a little power, but uh, I've used it a, a bit this summer and I was uh, not really able to charge the battery whilst on the move, since the, the, hook, the, the electrical connections here weren't, you know, my towing vehicle couldn't do it, and also the, I actually opened up this uh, this connector the other day and found that the the wire that was supposed to do the, the charging of the battery and in theory also run the refrigerator, that wasn't even hooked up in the connector. So if, even if I would have had my car uh, set up in such a way that it could provide uh, at least uh, an, get a, an, a fraction of the power needed to both charge the battery <laughs> and run the refrigerator, uh, it wouldn't get there. So. What it, what it does through, through this connector right now is it's, it's the lights. It's w w what is absolutely necessary for for being compliant and and legal on the road. So it does the, the marking marker lights and, and blinkers and brake lights. It does not, unfortunately, have reversing lights. It has a cable for reversing lights and uh, it probably has sockets for reversing lights too, which I might look into someday. But the cable for the reversing lights were also, was also disconnected in, in the connector here. And I, I, I researched this, this a bit and it seems that no one can really agree on how to hook this up. So uh, sooner or later I'm going to have to look into how the car is wired and so on to get all, to get the reversing if I want, want reversing lights working. Uh, th the inspection for this uh, vehicle runs out today. So, for, so for, from tomorrow I'm not legally allowed to tow it on the road except for to a, uh, an inspection place, which uh, I have scheduled for uh, a few days. Uh, in, a, in a few days. I've done service on it, I've, I've removed the bearings, cl cleaned them out, I've serviced the brakes uh, and all that stuff, so it should be good, I would hope. I've done some maintenance. This light, this marker light wasn't working, it was oxidized as packing hell in there, so took care of that. That is now shining. And as I said, I had the, the whole connector here apart, and there was a lot of oxidization <laughs> and old muck and crap in it, basically. So I cleaned it up, and now the, the, all the lights are shining brightly. Uh, you can have the, the brake lights on and the blinker on without, <laughs> without, uh, without the brake lights pulsating in, um, in step with the blinker, as it used to. Uh, it doesn't do that anymore, so that's all good. It still has a bit of electrical gremlins, though. Every now and then, the the marker lights will flicker out and everything. So, fingers crossed that that doesn't happen at the inspection place, or if it does happen, that they are a bit forgiving and I can jiggle the cable about a bit, and then there you go, they're they're lit. Uh, we'll see about that. But anyway, that's how it was in 1997. Uh, now it is 2023, so I'm. Um, thinking of modifying this quite a bit actually all of this these systems and don't know quite how to do it yet I have a few options and those are the, those options are, are what I plan to with the idea here with this thing whatever this is supposed to be or whatever this will turn out to be is to sort of brainstorm the different options I have and um, what is already more or less set uh, for what I'm going to do.
So, uh, we can start with what I'm going to have, well, what is more or less already set in stone because I've already ordered the parts for it and one of the parts have actually arrived which is a, um, a BMS battery management system like so uh, it's written in Chinese on it so that, that's, that, that will be a fun challenge but it should be possible to, to do then uh, 200 amps continuously here should this be able to do and it should balance the cells for me at a, two, a rate of 2 amps should be good and uh, and so on and I ordered battery cells those have not arrived yet but they are probably on a boat somewhere or on their way in, in one way or another uh, so the battery I'm, I'm intending to set up here is um, see if we can switch to, to the view screen it, it will be a, a life uh, lithium phos iron phosphate uh, battery it will be made up of eight cells uh, each uh, of uh, a capacity of 160 amp hours and uh, I just realized here that I'm we cannot we have not brought up the view screen just yet because I'm not recording the correct screen now am I no, oh, but there we go, maybe, I think. This, this should be the batteries, and unfortunately the printout I made did not, uh, not capture the, an image of the battery, but anyway, uh, 160 amp hours each, and eight of those, they look like this, basically. And I intend to hook them up in series, so that should make a sort of 24 volt uh, system here why why would you complicate things by making a 24 volt system uh, because it uh, obviously requires half the uh, half the cable gauge or whatever you want to do uh, basically rather than than doing a 12 volt based system but uh, I will have to have uh, uh, voltage reg regulators and, and things uh, to get down to 12 volts um, I think the one will be able to take care of most uh, or all of the the legacy systems that there, there's already in here except for the refrigerator obviously um, uh, and so on and there will be another one for doing like the, the stereo system which will be something to, to behold uh, I would think when I'm done usually turns out that way can't stop myself from from overbuilding those things. Uh, there we go. So the battery. Are we interested in this? Uh, slightly interested in this actually to see find out the capacity of the battery. So uh, one cell, uh, if that is 160 amp hours, and the nominal voltage is 3.2, or is it supposed to be 3.2 maybe? volts uh, which then gives uh, and and we have uh, batteries in uh, cells in series 8 so that should give us a nominal pack uh, voltage of yeah, I don't have Excel here for this uh, this user. I only have that for my regular user, and apparently it's not enough to have it installed on the computer. You also have to have it activated for for the current user. Anyway, uh, B three uh, times B four. That should give us a nom nominal pack voltage of twenty five point six volts, and the capacity then should be uh, let's see here 20 b5 25.6 times a um, uh, 160 amp hours so that should be about four kilowatt hours not not 4096 kilowatt hours but uh, but rather 4096 watt hours can also put put the capacity in kilowatt hours just to because that's you know a more familiar a more familiar unit really uh, 
divide that by a thousand. Yeah, four comma. Ah, there you go. So four kilowatt hours, uh, in theory, and, and so on. If we can use the nominal battery voltage as a reference point, I think that's what the nominal battery voltage is supposed to be used for. I don't know this. I, I haven't built the battery before. This goes off uh, well, my, my rudimentary knowledge of uh, electrics and electronics and, and things. Uh, and uh, say that we want to use, uh, don't want to completely deplete and neither completely fully load. Uh, full charge rather the battery uh, so say that we do a, a, a usable capacity of say 80 percent so, so that should be then um, be seven uh, times um, 0.8 and if you also put how do you do uh, I want to edit the cell an equal sign there you go so 3.4 3.2 kilowatt hours isn't the w supposed to be capital maybe there you go so 3.2 kilowatt hours i should have uh fully charged and use usable to 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 use for for things and uh, one thing that it will be used for is of course uh, changing out uh, this piece of Fucking crap refrigerator by a, by a proper one, a compressor driven refrigerator that runs uh, either on 12 volts or, or 24 volts. I think that they, most of them are universal, so they, they, they can run either on, on 12 or 24. You just hook up whatever you have, and, uh, and the refrigerator will go, Yeah, great, I have power. That will be incredibly uh, much more efficient than. Uh, than than this uh, crap that is in it right now and I don't think uh, we're going to go so far right now as to do an energy budget for this and see if this is all actually feasible what I'm thinking I'm only brainstorming here right uh, so about about I, the, I think the refrigerator might might end up using like uh, half one a half to one kilowatt hour per per day or per 24 hours it's fucking stupid this that you don't have a term for this in the english language a dyn as we would say a, a period of 24 hours a day you can say but a day is more like the from morning to evening in my book but anyway you know what i mean hopefully uh, so that's that, and, and the battery pack will be placed right where, reasonably at least, would be placed right where the battery pack is situated today. I mean, I suppose I could put it up here in front, but that will put a lot more weight up here. We should try and strive for having all of the weight, or most, uh, as much weight as possible over the axle, obviously. Uh, and th th there is a reason that they they designed it that way and put the battery there. The battery isn't that heavy, but I don't, haven't calculated how much of this will actually weigh. We could do that, we could check. Uh, maybe. They weigh about two kilograms each. These cells, oh, the, the 105 amp hours do. So the 160 amp hours will probably weigh a bit more. But, uh, but yeah, we can weight of a battery approximate uh, say that uh, they then weigh two and a half kilograms maybe or something times eight and plus a bit of uh, packing material or whatever you make it up the structural components of the battery it needs something you can't just put these things uh, uh, they need they need an enclosure of, of some description, uh, so that would probably go for, go add another five kilograms or something. Twenty five kilograms. That's I think I don't think that that's uh, m more than the current lead as lead acid battery weighs. No, at least not a lot. Oh, uh, this uh, should 
should reduce the the amount of gas that, that one needs to carry around and instead of having two flasks up here you could probably get by with just one just if you just make sure that it's actually topped up when when leaving <laughs> when setting out for a journey or something uh, Let's say so would be the weight. This this uh, caravan is rated to load uh, 250 kilograms uh, above its uh, its service weight, but I don't think that the the, the gas uh, containers, for example, are included in the service weight. So if you have those two have two of those, that's 40 kilograms, and then you you're down to loading 210 kilograms, and and it adds up rather quickly. <laughs> it does. All the stuff and one of the charms and one of the things th that that makes it practical and nice to to have a caravan is that you can f stuff it full of all all the stuff that you need and uh, and just have it there and whenever you feel like you're going out you the, my, my aim for this and and what you should aim what, what yeah what i think you should aim for is to just be able to hook the car up and, and go basically not spend the two days uh, packing before setting out because then you, it would be so much, there's too much friction to actually get it out and it won't be fun and you will not do it often, use it often enough. Uh, <coughs> so, then um, since we now have 3.2 kilowatt hours, I'm, I'm also thinking what else could we, could we take some other things off the, the load here uh, from the gas and for example if run the electrical heater I mean that yeah at one kilowatt that that will uh, not be able to run for very long but I, I like to run the heat uh, heater even in the summer uh, actually because uh, the nights uh, usually gets uh, quite cold quite cold well eight to ten degrees maybe and it's also nice to take the the rawness out of the air which you get by, by just running the heater and you don't need to have it it, it basically only runs the, the pilot light most of the time. It, it turns on every now and then. But it takes the, the rawness out and it makes it a much more pleasant stay. Uh, I don't like to be cold. And we uh, here we have a different we have a culture where we, we, we don't like to do like 15 blankets and uh, woolly sweaters and everything. No, because we have enough of that if we want to go outside. So when we're indoors, we like to be comfortable and not wearing too much clothing. So now, for example, I think it's, it's about zero degrees outside and I'm sitting here in uh, not many layers of clothing, put it that way. Uh, right, should we get on with the brainstorming on how to do this? Yeah, because then if, if I want to run the heater uh, of this battery pack, I think 3.2 kilowatt hours might not be enough to get any use out of it, but it could be enough to get hot water, for example. And it could also be enough to take to just take the the rawness out of it and, and just put a little bit of heat into the thing. I don't know. That, that I have, will have to experiment or something with that. Uh, and also a uh, like a, a little cooktop, and uh, like an induction cooktop would be nice. So you wouldn't have to use gas all the time for making coffee or cooking uh, cooking your food, for example. Could be nice. Uh, you could also then have a microwave if you wanted to to be able to heat food up in a in an efficient ma manner. Uh, and they don't, yeah, they use a lot of power, but they don't run for very long, uh, unless you want to do like, uh, I mean, you're not doing going to do a gouache here. You could, but it's supposed to be simmering away for five hours <laughs> to get it right, and. Uh, or might not be the the what you do sometimes if you have also then if i have have an electrical uh, hot plate i think they, you call it right uh, if if i have a hook up, electrical hookup then i can run that all all i want uh, also all the lights i've come quite a ways on converting them to led rather than the the incandescent bulbs the incandescent bulbs draw an insane amount of power uh, so you if you're out and about and you don't have the ability to charge you, you only would turn it on for when you actually really need light 
uh, which is fine in the summer when when it doesn't really get dark but uh, in autumn and spring you might really want to to have a bit more lighting on and so on so it's nice to have led lighting and so it, they aren't that dim uh, really they shines bright and they don't heat up so they don't use a lot of power right then uh, okay so if we indeed do have three points i could also you know i could extend this battery i could do it twice as large uh, i have two eight eight cells in series uh, twice two and then parallel those that would give me like six seven kilowatt hours but i need to charge this these two of course and uh, that's yeah now now we get over to 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 actually brainstorming this and, and, and how to do it how to actually accomplish this uh, to bring maybe this camera over here ah, i don't know i have another camera here Ta -da! where i can draw so uh, i'll start with the battery not, not sure it will look quite like this, but anyway, that, that is your battery. Right, it has a uh, it has a plus and a minus pole, and I'm uh, we're inferring here that the BMS is already before these points on it, right? So. Uh, to charge this, obviously we're going to have uh, uh, solar cells on the roof. I have not quite measured out how many I'll be able to fit and, and so on, but say that we have three of them and they are rated for 100 watts each maybe. So 100 watts times three and rated for. Yeah, that's that's if you're, you're at the equator at noon, you'll get 100 watts. So I'll, I'll maybe get like 50, 60, 80. 80 watts on a clear day around midsummers because uh, I won't be able to angle this towards the sun instead they will be more or less they more or less they will be uh, attached in a permanent manner to the roof I would think but I need to measure out the roof uh, and see what what sort of panels I can get in I'm also th having a little bit of a wonder about what types of panels to get because there are for example, there are flexible panels, which could be um, very easily installed on the roof. You could have some sort of glue and just glue them to the roof and they will follow the contours of, of the roof. But then I don't think they will be very efficient because when they will heat up and uh, if the if you have the solar pan panel, okay, so this that, that, that would be a very thin solar panel and it is directly attached to, to the roof of the caravan. Uh, this will heat up as the sun is uh, is uh, shining on it, and there is really nowhere where for the heat to go uh, except for wind blowing over it here. Uh, the heat will soak into the roof of the caravan, and then I think that they'll produce uh, a lot less than than they sh they could. So then then you you'd instead go with the. Uh, solid what you call them non-flexible regular cells uh, and have a little bit of an air gap uh, between the cell and uh, and the and the roof so you get a bit of ventilation so, so if the roof is there and, and you'd have the panel there and some mounts like so maybe uh, i think uh, that th these will be in um, in series with each other Keeping with the the high voltage here, the, I think that the, the, there is quite a drawback of having it like this. If, if one of these are shaded, I think it will bring bring the whole array down quite a bit. But then again, if they are in series, we will get. I think that usually they are like 20 volts. You get out of these uh, when they are open circuit, so so to speak. So you get 80 volts down here uh, when when everything is optimal and so on so you'd have that coming down here and so you'd need a, a solar charge controller like so uh, which would be hooked to the battery like so and 
the, the way I figure, at least, I'm not sure about this, um, how this will actually work, but I, I'm, I'm assuming that the BMS, this thing, the, the battery management system, that that actually will take care of much of uh, many problems here. So the solar charge con controller, if that's set to output, uh, let's say here now, the highest uh, the highest voltage, uh, peak voltage, if you can call it that, or rather full uh, battery voltage, say, that will be, uh, they have th 3.65 volts at absolute maximum state of charge, times 8, so that would be 29.2 volts, uh, and uh, the solar charge controller can probably be set up to output uh, something like that and I would like to have an MPPT solar charge controller obviously and then th th there needs to be fuses and breakers and everything but we're ex ex uh, ex 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 we are um, for sake of convenience and clarity clarity sure yeah right uh, we're abstracting those away uh, we're not drawing them in at the moment since at this stage we're only doing high level uh, but anyway i'm assuming i'm assuming that uh, see here now be my i think that this is supposed to go to the negative pole uh, on the battery and this goes to to your loads or, and your charger and everything and I've, i'm assuming that that this thing when it reaches, uh, when the cells reach the the voltage that I've set the, set this thing to to bring them up to, that it simply stops uh, accepting current in from the charge controller. Even if this this is still outputting uh, how many volts it's going to output for for this, I don't know. But uh, I'm I'm assuming that this thing will will uh, simply stop current flowing into the battery and then you'll have a, a, a sort of situation where the battery is uh, full and you can if you draw if you have a load here that will uh, if the voltage here from the solar charge controller is higher than the battery the load will obviously draw power from from the solar array and if uh, if you need more power in intermittently it will automatically automatically uh, it's maybe not the right word it's just due to the way the electricity works <laughs> it will take that out of the battery uh, too right so, so a solar charge controller and then of course uh, we have at least in theory we could have a wire coming from from the car uh, very rudimentary drawing of that's really not what my car looks like but that's that that's quite awful um, but anyway say that we have a, a, a wire coming from from the car here uh, I do have already from the battery to here I have a heavy gauge wire so I have potentially at least here at the rear of the car I have uh, basically all the capacity of the alternator that it can put out but then uh, in the uh, in the connector to the caravan that is a 2.5 square millimeter cable that is supposed to go to the, the battery charger and and the uh, ref refrigerator and it's pretty damn long uh, so it runs all the way here it runs all the way back for some reason the here is where they bring it in inside so here's the junction box uh, that goes out to all the marker lights and everything and, and also this 2.5 millimeter cable then for power uh, it goes there and it goes then goes here into to the the electrical cabinet what you call it uh, where it's supposed to charge the battery i mean over this distance uh, and so on th there is going to be so much voltage drop here that that's the amount of current uh, that you can actually put into the battery is going to be like negligible almost not negative, but you, you'll get something, but you'll not get a whole lot, which is fine uh, with the system that, that is here because that uses so very little electricity. Uh, the, uh, the energy comes primarily from, from the gas. But 
Uh, what I want to do then, I want to, uh, when I'm driving, I want to take uh, as much as I can out of the alternator. And since, since this is a 24 volt system, or even 29.2 at a full um, battery voltage, I assume I, I would have to step this up here to, to whatever you're supposed to charge this with. I, I don't know what that is, but it ought to be more than 29.2 volts if you want to get it up to max. But then I don't want to get it up to max. Hmm. I don't know. But I'll step the, the the voltage will be stepped up here. So from from 14.4 or something if the the ECU in the car decides that the, the battery needs charging or and it could also be like uh, about 13.6 if if the ECU has determined that the battery is now charged I'm going to float the battery instead. Uh, that's all right though because the a, a step up converter here will not really it will try and do the best of whatever it comes in and and put out what you have set it to so from here hopefully i can manage to get 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 that into the the connector the, the seven pin uh, trailer connector and possibly reuse the 2.5 square millimeter cable but that since that goes all this way I'm, I don't quite like that a whole lot that it takes this roundabout way to get to where it needs to be uh, never mind that for now but then you would have a would you you're stepping up the voltage here yeah so this uh, I mean somewhere in in the thing here there needs to be a a DC to DC charger mm -hmm. uh, to provide a to provide a good voltage for for the battery so it can charge. But since I'm stepping up the voltage here, that's basically the, the DC to DC charger, isn't it? Yeah, maybe that would be in the car then. This will not be a, a, a car that you can easily hook up to to just any car. <laughs> it would be quite specific to mine, I would assume. Uh, but then, yeah, uh, it'll hook, sorry, uh, we're supposed to go that way, it'll, it'll hook up that there. So when you're driving or if you just want to, if you really need to charge the battery, you could uh, start the car and have it idle. It's not really good for the alternator to be running at low, low RPM. Uh, since it doesn't get, it gets heavily loaded and, and the cooling fan fan the cooling fins what you call it in the alter alternator or might not be spinning at enough of a speed to keep the alternator happy in the long run but then that can also be sort of mitigated here by by adjusting just how much current you allow to flow out here and if you keep that within reasonable limits i think you'll be fine uh, i saw a stupid video of, of this uh, victron energy what they call themselves the overpriced uh, I mean I think the the gear is pretty good quality wise and so on but they had a demonstration of what happens when you when you run an, an a core alternator to charge a lithium battery and they had a setup where they had an electrical motor driving an alternator and they had a, a thing for measuring the RPMs sounds good so far right doesn't it except that uh, for the motor and the alternator, they had the same size of these here wheels. So the for every revolution of the motor, the the alternator would also make one revolution. And um, so they say, yeah, we run it at a typical uh, idle speed here. Uh, they didn't even do that. I think they ran it at like 1500 RPMs or something. And they show that ah, the, the alternator burned out. Yes, but in a vehicle, in a car, uh, on the crank, you'll have a larger wheel. And on the alternator, you'll have a smaller one. And usually here, the ratio is 3 to 1. So if the engine is uh, idling at 800 RPM, say, uh, you would get uh, 2400 RPM at the alternator. And that's uh, a lot more healthy for the alternators. That was all bullcrap, really. That test, I'd say. 
they, I mean, they did all that work to set all that up and then missed uh, such a basic, very basic premise of the thing. Just look in the engine bay and you, you'll see that the the thing on the crank is a lot larger than, than the thing on the alternator. Anyway, so this, now we're getting almost, we have almost all the things now. There's one thing missing and that, that would be an AC charger. So when you have uh, when you have access to shore power, I think they call it, it's a boat term, but that's what we call it anyway, shore power. I you have a you have a cable going in here and feeding it to 130 volts. So and in a case like that, you'd also want to to charge be able to charge the battery from from there, right? Like so, and that could be something. Uh, I mean, the, the caravan has a, a really nice uh, charger. Now it only is, it's only 15 amps, uh, but it is like. Uh, it's built in Norway. What well, mascot is the the uh, um, what's it called uh, the, the 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 name? Uh, it's so well built. It's ridiculous. <laughs> they don't build build them like that anymore. So that's really nice. But 15 amps maybe is, is not a lot. But then again, if you are hooked up to to electricity to shore power, then you're usually hooked up for quite a while. So 15 amps. But this is 15 amps at 12 volts, so at 24 volts you only get like 7.5 amps. And then it takes a while to get to 160 amp hours. But still, it's, it, takes a while. It's, it, it might be alright. I, I might stick with that for now, I don't know. I, but anyway, I, I, never, never mind, I, I need an AC charger in any case. So we're now up to a few components here. We have the solar charge controller and we have the AC chargers, uh, charger and there's also one thing missing here. If I want to run the heater, if I want to run a, um, a, a hot plate, a cooktop, uh, and a microwave or whatever it might be, I need to 230 volts AC. Because the, the, the fridge... Uh, I don't like really uh, this, these uh, inverter things because they are inefficient inefficient uh, they claim to be like 95 percent efficient but still not like that and also that's high voltage and it's dangerous and everything but the fridge i really want a dc fridge that can run directly from from here there uh, directly from dc uh, so that, I, I think I'm going to try and uh, and find one of those. The, those they seem to be quite expensive, <laughs> if you want a good one. But I don't, I don't feel like I need a, a freezer uh, compartment. I'm fine with only having a fridge, really. And the difference here with this fridge uh, compared to this one that is currently in the caravan is that here you can put in stuff that that is room temperatured, and within a few hours they will be cold. This that, that basically never happens in this refrigerator. If you put in stuff that you, if you put cold stuff in, yeah, it will keep that cold for you. But if you load it up with with a with with a, a significant amount of beer or, or something that is not cold when you put it in, I know it will take fucking weeks for that to 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 get down to to a nice cold temperature. So I I really don't like those uh, absorption fridges. So horribly inefficient things. Uh, so so also and now this is diagram is com extremely messy. Uh, yes, but also an a an AC inverter there, uh, and that is also hooked up here. I mean, I don't need to draw this in because it's obviously that way. And since here. Uh, we might be pulling uh, like quite a lot of power actually uh, like a, a uh, hot plate that will be like uh, one and a half kilowatts or something uh, the heater uh, in, in the caravan if I can run that out of the batteries for 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 any useful amount of time at least to get hot water for for showering maybe that, that that's uh, at least one kilowatt or two kilowatts if I put it in the high power mode 
So I need to get quite a beefy inverter. Uh, I'd, I'd say that I had one of 2.5 kilowatt one. Right. So this this has now added up to quite a few components, like the solar charge controller, the AC charger, the AC inverter, and the battery. The battery is is there anyway. So. And, and it would probably add up in price as well. Uh, I think it like a, a, a solar charge controller and, and a proper MPPT one, at least 150. Um, how the hell do you actually draw a euro sign? It's like an. Uh, it's like something like that. Uh, we don't use euros, uh, <laughs> so. That. But something like that, and, and the AC inverter, because you, you obviously want a pure sinus wave inverter, not this modified modified sine wave, as they call it. It should pro should actually be called modified square wave, because it looks more like fucking junk. That don't not comfortable plugging in a um, fridge, for example, which I'm not going to do anyway. But uh, nah, I want a pu pure sine sine wave, so I don't need to worry about what I plug in there. The uh, the heater is probably fine with a modified square wave. It's probably fine with a square wave even because that's only a resistor, basically a submerged in water. So, so that, I don't think that's too picky about things. But yeah, so so it's added up to quite a few. Um, this is quite expensive uh, to get a proper one. The, 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 the in, in ranging from from 250 euros to to like uh, five five six seven eight hundred eight hundred say yeah uh, and the AC charger that that I could uh, I I would probably roll my own from from like a um, do I have that here no from from like a uh, an old uh, old server power supply or something that that a really powerful one. I have an, I have two 1100 watt server power supplies that uh, puts out about 90 amps at uh, 12 volts, and I can step that up to to a good voltage for for the battery to charge and limit the current a bit or something. Uh, so, so that I could probably cobble together for for not a whole lot of of money. 20 euros maybe. Maybe more forty something, but anyway, this then adds up. So the inverter, I don't know, five hundred. Uh, solar charge controller, one fifty. AC charger, not a whole lot, forty. And uh, what else? Uh, this, this contraption, the DC to DC charger. Uh, you can buy these, uh, but I would probably uh, make my own. Uh, in some fashion or other, because uh, I don't expect to be able to do a whole lot here, as some, but not a whole lot. And I, I probably also to to get the most out of it, I would have to reroute this cable. I, I would like to take it off here and go inside, but I, I really don't want to cut the cable open uh, just to shorten that one. So it would probably have to go all the way. <sighs> right. But there's an, there's an alternative to this, which is scary, almost. Um, because there, there's like an, an all-in-one, there, there are all-in-one solutions for this. Uh, let's see if I can find that here, here. Ta -da. And this is scarily cheap too, 256 euros for a 2.4 kilowatt, 24 volt, uh, frequency pure sine wave, MPPT. So this has everything. This has this has the AC charger in it. This has the solar charge controller in it, and it has the AC inverter in it. In in one little unit, not little. In one unit, that that is only 256 euros. I mean that's too good to be true, isn't it? Uh, you can read the reviews here, and they are all great. It's it's fan uh, a fantastic pro product, apparently. 
I read the manual. It seems a bit convoluted to 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 actually configure and so on, but not impossible. And this uh, this we can look at. Uh, this is how it will work. So you have solar going into it. Uh, you can have either a generator or a grid power to it, and then it will power your appliances. And I, I'd be able to pull 2.5 kilowatts uh, long term, and I think it peaked to like three some three point something kilowatts. Uh, so that, that's nice. Uh, I can deplete my entire bank, battery bank, in one and a half hours if I wanted to. That's not. So, so this is like I can't help but feel that this is quite an. I mean, the price you can't quite argue with such a good price. But does it does this actually work? And another thing with this is that uh, I read in the manual that you you're supposed to put it in a well ventilated space. You're not supposed to mount it on a flammable uh, surface. Uh, all surfaces within the caravan are flammable. It's all wood and so on. So, well, yeah, sure, you could put it uh, here then. Uh, outside of the actual living room, the living quarters, uh, what you call it. Uh, have it there, but then you have a few challenges with that. One thing is that if this thing would catch on fire, you have uh, possibly like 20 kilograms of propane right next to it, which is not great. Uh, although, unless it goes up in like a, a complete fire, I think what happens is that some component uh, fizzles out and produces a bit of smoke. I don't think that the whole thing will go up in flames then uh, I think that, that would be safe. But the challenge then is that you get quite a distance if the battery pack is here and your thing is here. I mean, for to, to, to get then 2.5 kilowatts, uh, let's go back to, to the not quite Excel thing, but Apple's uh, version of it. Uh, to 0.5 kilowatts uh, AC load and just for the sake of it we disregard uh, inefficiencies uh, in the system and say that this is uh, the inverter is 100% efficient it isn't but anyway just to get an, a ballpark figure of how much current this will draw out of the battery So the nominal uh, pack voltage uh, 25.6 and um, the uh, the current uh, or the the power 2500 watts uh, this is a here now p e equals u times i right so then uh, p, 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 p yeah but i want i i want the current so p uh, u i and we uh, want to have I, so we divide the power by the voltage, of course. Uh, so we take the P15 and divide that by, uh, by the nominal pack voltage, voltage which is in P5. That will not be right, because I need to put this in watts instead. There you go. There is uh, almost a hundred amps uh, then, uh, and and then all of a sudden you need like a, an a enormously thick wire, two of them. Ah oh, well, you could I suppose you could use the chassis for ground, so so you'd only need one uh, going from from the battery pack up to this magical thing that does everything all in one. Uh, Right. Well, maybe. I mean, you, you, you could do do a whole lot more efficient. You don't need to take all this this roundabout way of doing it that way. You could do it this way. The the thing from here to there is like five and a half meters, so it's seven meters, seven hundred and twenty centimeters, I believe, from there to to here. So that's what it says in the in the registration papers, the length of the vehicle. 
so from there to there is like two and a half meters. That's actually not uh, not infeasible. If you have a, put a a 50 square millimeter cable, you could do that. You could do 100 amps mm, without without too much uh, losses for for two and a half meters. Actually, you could. But then also all all the solar panels they would run into here. Uh, the uh, the AC you'd you'd put AC into this thing uh, as they have uh, here. So you'd put from from here is the, where the electrical box is. You, you you'd put something there, and I I suppose I'd also want the switch, which, which has like uh, three three positions, which is like a grid nothing and uh, an inverter so you, you would not so it would be it must be completely completely impossible to get to connect both the grid here and simultaneously get uh, AC out of the inverter that would be quite dangerous and quite non-compliant and quite quite bad and then I don't know, I haven't found in, in the documentation how they actually do the, the neutral, how they establish neutral in a system like this, because I'm not an electrician, but I do believe that in a system like this, that there is, you need to establish a, 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 a neutral somehow. And how do you do that? And when you, when you charge it from the grid, I don't know. It might be floating somewhere, and that could be a bit scary too. Um, right? Yeah, I think it is a bit scary. And it's also a bit scary, I mean sketchy, this thing, this product. It's just too cheap. 256 euros for, for an inverter of 2.4 kilowatts, uh, a solar charge controller, MPPT, supposedly solar charge controller, that can do uh, at least I think it had like a limit of uh, what was the limit here of of how the voltage of the solar panels. I don't quite remember, but I believe I made a, a sort of rough calculation that three solar panels in, panels in series would not be should not pose a problem for it. Anyway, <coughs> uh, so, so that's uh, if we. If we put this aside for the moment uh, and just uh, try and draw out a, a somewhat of a schematic of how, how that would look if you would use this all in one thing, you still have the battery. Uh, minus plus, and, and say that we, we, we just tie that to, to ground. Uh, so we use the chassis uh, as a ground. It is already. Um, if I measure, uh, if I measure from the 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 connect connector connector here, the ground cable. If I measure between there and and the chassis, then they are connected. So that's how it is right now. Uh, but then, w w what happens with the AC system and its ground? Because this thing is uh, is not uh, connected to ground. This is on rubber tires. Uh, so what is the ground? Is the chassis ground for the AC as well? Now we're getting into territories here where, where I'm a bit uncomfortable and also since we're dealing with 230 volts I mean it's fine to be uh, to not be completely sure when you're dealing with 24 volts that's not going to hurt you really uh, uh, unless you lick the lick the, the somehow both the of these you put them in your mouth or something then that's going to hurt quite a bit but if you touch this then not a whole lot's going to happen uh, unless you're, ex no, no, I don't think so, right, mate. Uh, even if you're sweaty and uh, and covered in, in, you have just taken a bath in in the Dead Sea, and covered in salt and electrolytes, still don't think that that's going to pose a problem. Really. But two hundred thirty volts, that that's going to fucking kill you. Uh, <laughs> so, but then anyway, anyway, we we try and draw this out. So, so th th this will have the magical box. Or the, instead of calling it a magical box, we call it the all-in-one. Uh, 
all in one and that would connect say that we, we connect that to chassis ground because I don't feel like running uh, to to uh, thick expensive wires from that to, to the battery maybe this is stupid maybe you can't do it this way well then I'll, I'll we'll have to get another one of these there you go that's the battery connection and you also have the the solar panels hooked up to it and the AC uh, incoming uh, shore power You could still use this nice, uh, nice box that is on the side of the caravan, and just add this uh, three-position switch. So, you, when you, if you connect it, if you, if you, if you have it in, in like this, providing, because uh, yeah, obviously, the, the way that this would work is the, the AC out here, uh, AC out. I would feed that into the the existing uh, wiring for for 230 volts, so all the outlets uh, and things all around the the thing would work, and the, the heater would work from it uh, and everything, right? That would go into into the into the thing, mm -hmm. and then you'd have like a, a here somewhere along. The way here you'd, you'd have this three position switch right uh, now I'm thinking I'm making up this as I go along will this actually work yes because you'd have it connected like so and then if you connect the shore power but the shore power is supposed to go yeah right of course uh, here, here's the, the idea that this thing has a, a separate input for for the grid charger so so that would be like that but what this would do then is if you have shore power then there's I don't see the point of running uh, running your loads through this one then then so this switch would then disconnect the output the AC output from here and instead tie it to directly here right that should be uh, the most prudent thing to do you could run it like you don't do that and run everything through the system here but why? I mean, this uh, this will be of much higher quality. This power. This will definitely be a, a true sine wave and and everything. And also, you you're not putting strain on on your batteries and, and everything like that. And they can charge, and they can also charge from the solar, depending on where you are. If you're at a campsite, you're probably only paying a, a fixed fee for electricity. That's usually how it is here, anyways. So far, it's probably going to change the way the electricity prices are nowadays. Can't imagine, but that it seems a bit silly that a person coming with this caravan in summertime, plugging it in to shore power, uh, using it for for the refrigerator, maybe for a bit of hot water, like a kilowatt hour or two a day. That this person, uh, and maybe you, you have the lights on a bit more when you have shore power and everything, but this person then pays the same uh, price for electricity, which is which around here, usually around five euros per day, per 24 hours. Uh, but then the next guy comes along and he's pulling this with a, with an, uh, with a battery car. So he needs to put like 80 kilowatt hours into his car as well. I don't see how the if you are the campsite uh, owner uh, how how it would be reasonable for for that person to to pay the same for electricity as the the person having this setup. I don't know how big of a problem that is. Uh, towing with electrical vehicles is uh, isn't all that as far as I've heard. Uh, but towing towing with combustion vehicles is uh, oh should we go into a side track here? Because there's been a little bit of, uh, of fuss about this, that uh, towing with electrical ve vehicles is terrible, they lose all the range and everything, yeah? And when you tow with a combustion vehicle, I mean, my car you does, usually it's diesel, so, so without the caravan, I get like uh, 6 liters per, per 100 kilometers maybe, and with the caravan, I get like one liter or one point, or sorry, ten liters or, or eleven liters per one hundred kilometers. Uh, so it almost doubles. But 
the, someone is doing silly things on the road outside. Uh, the, the the thing about that is the, the, the combustion engine is, is much more efficient at high load. Uh, so that's why you don't get a, such a dramatic increase in fuel usage compared to the electrical vehicle, because the electrical motor is is just, I think, more or less just as efficient at low load as it is at high load. So, so you could could almost say that when you're pulling, pull when you're towing with your combustion uh, engine, uh, you you you're getting your engine is working more efficiently than it is otherwise, and therefore you don't see that dramatic increase in fuel usage as you do the dramatic decrease in in um, in range from your battery vehicle. I can hate battery vehicles, by the way, but that's a completely different thing. Uh, they think that they are saving the earth by, by driving around in these battery vehicles with all the rare earth minerals and everything that gets put into this gets put into these batteries is just insane, really. And we don't have the infrastructure to charge them. No, stop it, stop it, stop it. Don't go in there. Don't go there. Stop. Yeah, we stop. We're at the all-in-one thing. So this is now basically done, right? Um, we should also maybe. I'm not sure if this has a DC uh, input. I think it has. Um, I think it has. Uh, it's not really showing here though. See if we can. Uh, AC input, AC output. Uh, it has a DC input. It has a photovoltaic input. But the DC input is the battery pack, I would assume. Because there isn't another connection for the battery pack. So for the for DC charging here, uh, <coughs> you'd still need a separate uh, a separate DC charger to do this. That you uh, you do uh, well since we we we're using we're using chassis chassis ground here apparently. So, so you, you do it like that, uh, and then that, that goes to 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 the car. Um, still, I, I apparently cannot draw a, a car. And it produces exhaust. Uh, yes. And now the nice, nice idea if, if you actually have an electrical vehicle and you're towing your caravan around, as long as you can charge it uh, every now and then, you have you have a, a huge battery pack in, <laughs> in there that that you could probably, uh, if if it has one of those uh, what do they call it, vehicle to grid connections, just take that and hook that up to to your uh, shore power in there, and then. You can do away with with this thing, but then you still need to charge that thing every now and then. And as far as I I can see, the the rates if you want to charge uh, on the road, <laughs> it's really fucking expensive. Uh, it's like three four times uh, the actual electrical price, the price for electricity as compared to charging it at home or something. So that doesn't seem uh, like a very good deal. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So, in, in one way, this is a pretty clean solution, and now as I'm drawing this out, I'm sort of liking this a bit. Uh, the, the thing I don't like about it is that I really would need to put that out here. I don't trust it to have it in here. It should also, it says also that it should be in a well-ventilated area. I mean, on, but on a hot, hot summer's day, sun sun's shining on here, it get, can get pretty hot in here, I think. But that also brings me to the next issue with this thing. Uh, and and really the, the one one of my main issues with it is that it has uh, active uh, cooling fans and I, i'm not quite sure if they are like running at least a little bit all the time and if you ramp up if you pull a lot of a lot of power out or if you're putting a lot of power in either through solar or through through your ac charger or wherever it comes from these fans will ramp up and they're noisy so that's another reason why you wouldn't want to keep them in the living space. And this has a, uh, I mean, just doing nothing, just sitting here and uh, having the inverter active and and doing solar charging and doing whatever it does, monitoring battery and so on. It used, if I don't disremember here now from the manual, it uses uh, about 25 watts doesn't sound like a lot but th then 
think that about that you you need to run this this will need to run constantly all the time so 25 watts uh, per per day what's that then mm. all in one one power consumption uh, 25 watts uh, times uh, uh, 24 hours right so that's you still need to you still need to put an equal sign first you know 25 watts times 24 hours that's so that's 600 watt hours uh, that, that that uses they're doing doing nothing really more than than charging the batteries from the solar when that's available and uh, and having power available here uh, for in the AC outlets so that is quite a bit that but yeah that's not an insignificant uh, that amount of yeah, that's basically as much as the the refrigerator will will draw uh, in this system, well, I can, you know, I could, there's a switch on it, you turn it off, on off, like so, and then uh, just uh, have, I, I still have, even using this, uh, did, it, did it have a DC output or, or what did it do? No, it doesn't. So you, you uh, you'd still take your DC loads uh, off here and then when you don't want to you don't need to charge from solar or you don't need the the AC then you can turn it off uh, and we still have everything here and we have the the BMS in the battery that will still protect it and make sure that it doesn't discharge too much and everything so that's all good and the DC charger can still do its work too so then hmm. Yeah, but I think that a setup like this, how much power does a solar charge controller use? I don't think it's anywhere near uh, 25 watts. Nowhere near 25 watts. I think we're talking like a few watts. I'm speculating now, but, but I think so. Uh, the AC inverter, of course, draws a, a bit of uh, idle power, even if you're not actually using anything of the output. But... In a, in a setup like this, you'd have a switch here to turn it on and off when you need it. So that's, so that's less of a problem. But that's not, that doesn't need to run all the time. You, t you turn it on if you want to use your hot plate or your microwave or, or you want to try and run the heater off it. Still not sure that that's feasible, but <laughs> at least not on, on uh, 3.2 kilowatt hours. I don't know. Uh, and it's difficult to check now here, here in autumn when, when the temperatures outside is, is what it is but if uh, if the temperatures outside was a bit more like summertime then it would be quite easy to to, to actually measure how, how much power this requires to, to just put the, to just take the, the rawness out of the the environment indoors uh, and and uh, keep the hot water hot but I can't do that right now. Uh, another disadvantage of this is, of course, if this goes bad, uh, which, I mean, I can't see that that would be a far-fetched uh, occurrence <laughs> to happen, uh, then then you lose everything. You, you lose your solar charging, you, you lose your inverter, uh, you lose your IE, you lose your AC, you lose... Uh, what else do you lose? Ah. Well, I can still run all my DC loads, but I can't get any power into it except for, for the DC charger from, from the car. Which is quite rubbish. And only really feasible when you're, when you're traveling around. Because then, if you travel for a bit, then, yeah, sure. If you do... I don't know how much I'll be able to actually put through this but at, at the voltage that the battery needs to charge uh, I've seen this DC to DC chargers uh, at four, rated for 40 amps but if I want 40 amps into here 
I need basically to pull 80 amps out of the alternator and that's way too much for it. Uh, so that's that's not... I, I might be comfortable pull, pulling like 40 amps out of the alternator here. Uh, but that would then be 20 amps going into the battery. Uh, so in one hour I'd get 20 amp hours into it. In one hour of driving that is. Uh, and is that, uh, yeah, it will add up if you travel long ways, but you usually, usually you do it just, at least how it turned out this summer, we did like maybe an hour driving a day, stayed for a while, an hour driving, and so on, so it's not a whole lot actually that, that will be coming in that way. Uh, <laughs> But then, yeah. Uh, so, so if if that goes out, then then you're sort of ruined. You're sort of screwed. And also, it could catch on fire, uh, and it would then catch on fire in in close proximity to to your gas bottles. Doesn't sound terribly safe. Sounds terribly unsafe. Uh, although those I don't know, but they are rated quite se se severely. Those bot gas bottles. They're supposed to be able to take a, quite a bit of heat and everything. And as I said, I don't think that this will... There is not a whole lot of combustible material in this, right? So it would it would probably fizzle and, and produce smoke. And then that, that would be that, unless you have it mounted to a a combustible surface. But, but here, in here, I think that there is, uh, at least down here, there is uh, this aluminium plate goes down. Uh, so that should be all right. Maybe. I mean, this. Uh, I can't get away from the fact that it is so incredibly cheap. <laughs> 256 euros. And that includes uh, shipping. <laughs> uh, but of course, warrant, you, you can forget about warranty. You're dealing with Chinese. They, they really don't have a grasp of the concept of warranty. So forget about that. If it goes out, it, it, or if it doesn't even work on arrival, if it's dead on arrival, you probably... Well, if, it's, if it really is dead on arrival, then maybe we would be able to get something. But probably if I order this now, it's on clearance, so who knows for how long it will be available. And there will be, it will be st quite a while before I actually have all this hooked up so I can actually test it. And I won't know if it was dead on arrival until like months from now. And, and then go and contact the Chinese and say that uh, this is, was probably dead on arrival. I just didn't get to it until now. And they will most likely not respond at all uh, in my experience anyway I mean th this might, might also be dead on arrival yeah, who knows uh, I won't be able to, to check that before I have the ba battery cells uh, and uh, and actually built the battery which is not a completely straight what do you call it uh, insignificant task in itself uh, but Still, uh, I mean, if, if I wanted to buy a, a 2.4 kilowatt uh, inverter, uh, just a, a, a pure sine wave inverter, say, th that is of equal power to that one, w from here, from this sketchy, slightly sketchy place. Uh, this is 2.5 kilowatts, but it's 12 volt, I need a 24 volt. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Here, twenty. Yeah, but that's five kilowatts, uh, six hundred and twenty euros. Uh, and here's an MPPT, twelve hundred watt MPPT controller. That's two hundred and twenty-eight euros. That's by by by. The, what's wait a minute? What's the difference between this one? And um, and this one seems to be uh, the same thing, right? More or less. But this one is slightly cheaper uh, and it's not on clearance. But yeah, it has the same reviews. I think this is just 
but this has a lot more answered questions though. This, uh, this only has nine of them. And it includes a, a CD-ROM. I think that this one does that too. It's the same product, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm, I'm not very sure about anything about this, but I, yeah, I'd say that it is. Uh, but could we find an inverter that is for 24 volts uh, and does a um, is this variable frequency drive inverter for spindle motor? No, that's not quite what I need. A welder, a plasma cutter, no, that's not quite what I need neither. Uh, it doesn't seem to. And they don't seem to have a lot of choice in the. Uh, but this one, it has the same power, but this is uh, at 12 volts, and uh, I need a 24 volt thing. But supposedly, maybe you could get something like this. Uh, but then, yeah, that's 215 euros, 216. So that's almost the price of this, all in one thing. I mean, I could. I could do it uh, this way, get this all in one thing, because it's 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 a good deal just for the inverter, if that works. And maybe initially, then, if I go with this, have the solar panels uh, charge through here, I have my AC charger and everything, but then maybe later add a separate mm, solar charge controller to it. Uh, and uh, instead hook the the, uh, the solar panels uh, to that one. Hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone here in in a few places, as you can probably tell. If uh, you by by any happenstance happen to have experience with this, or if I'm doing some thinking completely wrong here here in in some regard, please please let me know down there in the comments that's what they're for and uh, any input is is welcome maybe i don't know <laughs> i can't really say that before i've seen what what the input would be or feedback are you not supposed to say feedback anymore because that's apparently uh, offensive so you're supposed to use the term feed forward nowadays to be um, to satisfy all the the social justice people and everything uh, but feed forward, feedback, whatever, it's all, it's welcome. Uh, or ideas, ideas of how to do this. So I have a few, d d the DC loads that I intend to run, I already covered the refrigerator, but then of course the, the stereo system. And that has me a little bit worried here uh, because I'm running of 24 volts. But maybe not. It, it depends. If, I, if I'm going to use a traditional uh, car, car amplifier, uh, a class AB, thing that that wants like uh, 14 volts to be really happy about things but the, there are nowadays you know this um, uh, amplifier boards uh, class d amplifier boards and they i think that they can they can be pretty happy with the, the raw battery voltage here and then i don't need to put a, a voltage regulator in front of it with the voltage regulator that would be great uh, for providing you know power to to the caravan system and such such but but for for a uh, an audio amplifier, if you turn it up quite a bit, and the transients in the in the music, for example, when when it wants to, it's supposed to move a ten inch uh, subwoofer by by a significant amount. That's quite a surge uh, of current, and the that voltage regulator would probably not be able to handle that surge. But uh, I could use I have in uh, in storage somewhere a pretty nice four channel amplifier, and I could use that for for speakers and then have a class D thing run, running directly i.e. via the, 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 two, the four channel amplifier uh, JBL something run that via the uh, the uh, uh, on a voltage regulator uh, and have a, a class D amplifier running directly off the battery voltage for the subwoofer maybe but that's all all 
in, 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 in good time. And of course all, all the, the caravan systems will, will go here as well. But that that isn't really that bad. Uh, the, the main breaker for, for this, um, for the caravan systems, electrical systems, is 16 amps. So that's all right, that's easy. That, that, that we can manage with, with a voltage regulator. Uh, no problem. To run the lights and water pump uh, and whatnot. Yeah, so that's that's that then. Uh, I've speculated a bit here now for almost one and a half hours on, on how to how to upgrade uh, the electrical system uh, uh, and modernize this uh, caravan a bit and be make it a bit more uh, of an off-grid thing. Uh, it, it can be used completely off-grid as is. You just need to to refill your gas bottles quite often, and this incredibly crappy refrigerator. That, that, that is, it can shouldn't even be called a refrigerator. <laughs> I really don't like those. It's really convenient to be able to run off both of both gas uh, and uh, a, a 230 volt AC and also 12 volt DC. But yeah, I, I already rambled on about this enough, I think. So there you have it. I, the, these are the two different uh, things I'm, I'm considering. Uh, but now as I drew this out, this, this is a bit more appealing to me than, than I initially thought it would be. Uh, I just I, I need this thick cable uh, to feed it uh, to, to be able to feed it uh, at least a hundred amps from the battery. But the idea was to have all this uh, thing, all these things uh, right in here in this little closet where, where the battery is currently located. And if, if you do this as uh, separate, I, this setup, I mean, it, this is messy as hell, uh, then, then it is quite feasible to do all this in, in, in that little, uh, in that little uh, cupboard or closet rather uh, but with this uh, one-in-one magic box I'm really not comfortable having that inside so that needs to be outdoors outdoors in here mm -hmm. right then that, that will be that for this time I've now drawn out my, my ideas here which uh, got them sort of down on paper this has been in floating around in my head for a while so that, that, f that was good to get that down and uh, maybe this will allow me to move on a little bit and and ponder the different solutions and also as i said all inputs or feedback or ideas leave them in the comments please and thank you so very much for watching here the dr plurings um, caravan uh, caravan modification we shall see how it goes there, there are many things to do with the caravan, not only electrical wise. You, I, for example, it has two, two separate beds. Here in the back right now, I would prefer to have a uh, uh, one wide bed. Um, that's something to, to look at too, and, and maybe a little something to, if you do, ah, th th yeah, there's lots of stuff uh, that you could improve on. So far I'm happy I got it for the price I did. It, it has uh, a bit of wear and tear on it and I've been fixing a bit of things and servicing it and so on. And we shall see what the inspection people say about it. Hopefully they will be happy. I've not been able to really test... I've, no, I've not gotten the opportunity to really test it, drive it since I did the service here. And I really should do that before going to the inspection thing. So if it turns out the, the one brake is... is uh, pulling the caravan like like that when you're braking or if it is constantly it isn't no it shouldn't be dragging because uh, i've checked that the wheels turn freely yeah and the thing in the middle there that, that's supposed to transfer brake force to both wheels so that is more or less 90 degrees towards the the thing that the pulls on the brake yeah whatever get off it now yes uh, that was one and a half hours thank you so very much for watching ladies and gentlemen good Night. Cheerio.